All right, go ahead and give me So we got elected. Well, then we had to deliver. So we developed what we call the taxpayer's agenda. It was, uh, it was the taxpayers against the tax spenders. And that's really what it came down to. And economics drove many of the decisions that we did. It was our ability, and sometimes inability, often an inability to communicate what we were trying to do, is what we were fighting with so big and never been done before. But had the economy been good, a lot of, I believe, the, the revolution that took place would not have happened. Only because we wouldn't have had to have happened. We wouldn't have had to cut the spending. We wouldn't have had to cut the programs. But we had to. If we were going to balance the budget without raising taxes. And that's what we ran on. We ran on not raising taxes. We ran on cutting taxes. So how could we come in as a new administration say, oh, never mind, problem's bigger than we thought, we're going to have to raise taxes. We saw it happen back when Jim Blanchard raised the income tax first came in, Johnny Miller became Senate Treasury. So we had to um, push and do a lot of things which were very unpopular. If you remember the 10 cities that we got outside of the state capital, we cut welfare. That came about when we were trying to figure out what we were going to do to save money. Jerry Miller, our budget director, or our head of the Department of Social Services, Given it's a governor, there's only one way you're going to save money in DSS. Because everything is a base budget that continues to grow. You're going to have to cut out an entire program. What? What? You're going to have to cut out general assistance for everybody that does. And that would save every how much it saved. So we said, okay. We cut it. At the same time, we felt that, look, we can't do that and not cut programs which the more wealthy well-to-do took advantage of, which meant then we went in and we cut subsidies for the arts. We got more screams about that than we did about cutting the, the welfare programs. And we went through and we cut out all the earmarks. You should have been on the budget that day when we presented the budget down with Jake Betty sitting there and he's going through the bill and he goes, They were all gone. There wasn't going to be the funding for the train depot in Durand or the thing for the gazebo in, uh, in such as we cut them all out of the budget because we had to. We had to close mental health hospitals. Remember that? And we did that because, again, it was budget -driven. We couldn't maintain a community service with an institution service, which were the hospitals. The hospitals were primarily an employer. They helped a few people, but when we had down here at the Lafayette Clinic a staff in excess of 104 patients, and we had hospitals up in Traverse City that had more employees than that, and about no more than 10 patients, you cannot justify the cost. And so I was assigned to come down and shut down the Lafayette Clinic. That was not a good thing to do, and I still have memories of those patients with every thing they owned and plastic garbage bags standing next to their doctor as they were as the state police were their escorts when the attorney general gave us the go when we went to court to escort themselves out to the buses to get on the buses to be transferred to their individual hospitals that were remaining open or to their community homes and they couldn't get out of the parking lot because protesters would run out. Now who did that benefit? And this was the same this was the same clinic that we tried to close it earlier, protesters got into the hospital, or not into the hospital, from outside the hospital, and chained the door shut from the outside so people couldn't leave. Imagine if there had been a fire or some other disaster where people were going to be able to leave. That's the kind of thing we were fighting against. But the way we got around that is we didn't have a sensitive media. They were the, everything was always bad since, you know, slope head Neanderthal ideologue. We made a campaign that we're going to run and we're going to go and continue what we did in the campaign. One of the things we did in the campaign, we visited every county. Now, that's been done a lot since then, but it had never been done until we did it. And we did it for a purpose. We just did it more than just to visit all the counties. We did it because we had to build a relationship there, and we did it to contrast ourselves with Blanchard who very seldom got into the counties. In fact, we visited many counties, and we were taken around by the Democrat county clerk, or the Democrat representative, or the Democrat sheriff, 
And they loved Engler. Engler cared to come and visit. Jim Blanchard had never spent a day there and had never responded positively to an invitation. And so when we took office, we kept that up. Engler didn't like it. We drove the Oldsmobile, which then became the whatever we had before. And we visited every county every year for four years. Well, I tell you, you go to some of these counties and you visit that county every year for four years, you get every county in the county. And they had a dual purpose. One, to keep our pledge that that's what we were going to do. We said that's what we were going to do in the campaign. Right? We did it in the campaign. We are going to do it as governors. We kept our promise. And two, we knew that if we did it over four years, that whoever the Democrat was when they got the nomination would not be able to compete with us anywhere else state. And that reduced then our size of where we had to go, we call it the triangle. The Detroit Metro Market, to the, the Tri-Cities Metro Market, through Lansing over to Grand Rapids and back. And that's where we spent our time. And when we went back to our people in the campaign, we could tell them, look, we're not going to come north of 20. You've seen us for four years. And they said, you come north of 20, we're going to shoot you. Stay down there and do what you need to do. They, we spent time with them. In fact, we had some people said, this is when the anger showed them, this is the most, this is true story. This is the most excitement we've had in our town since the silo blew over in 37. <laughs> 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 they never had a governor that had been there before. They took him around, they did everything. <clears throat> and it was a great time. We had that kind of response everywhere we went. But at the same time, we had protests and others that, that happened when we took on the teacher unions. But, but it had a purpose. And we just didn't do it uh, to do it. And that, that happens sometimes. People see a gimmick and they say, well, let's do the gimmick. Well, every situation is different. When Lamar Alexander was governor of Tennessee, he walked the state of Tennessee in 1978. Now, this just wasn't something that he just, we sort of dreamed up. When he ran in 1974, he got destroyed. And he got beat very badly in a lot of rural Tennessee, which is Republican Tennessee, because they saw him as an out-of-step, stuffed shirt Nashville lawyer. Well, what better way could we do that than to show the real Lamar Alexander and Lamar walk 1,022 miles, started in January when it was 12 below zero, ended when it was 101 in the Mississippi River on July 4th. And he walked the state of Tennessee, but we had a plan with that. We had a communication plan with that. When he was walking in East Tennessee, we were filming him and running commercials in West Tennessee. And when he got to West Tennessee, we talked about the walk in East Tennessee, using East Tennesseans, people he'd stayed with. He had a band, we call it Alexander's Washboard Band. A lot of people don't understand, remember, but Alexander, Lamar Alexander's a concert pianist. He's a great musician. And this Alexander's Washboard Band consisted of uh, four members of the UT University of Tennessee Marching Band who took a year out of school, served as his advance team, and drive around Tennessee in a flatbed truck, um, and go into towns before the march, show up on the walk, and play in the town square. Tennessee's, they play Rocky Top, and they play all these, you know, songs. And the mark come walking in, and they'd have two, three hundred people be sh showing up. And the mark come up, and he'd jump up on the flatbed truck, and he'd join in, and he'd play the washboard, and he'd play the piano, and he'd play the trombone, and and uh, then he'd give his talk, and off he went. And he kept, and he'd start walking in the next time. And if he stopped to go to a fundraiser, he'd put a big red X on the road, and he'd leave, and he'd go somewhere else to his fundraiser, and he'd come back. And you start right at that X and keep right on walking. And we talked about that all through the campaign. So that when he won re-election, one of the things he did is that he did to help local communities, they did walkathons. And he would come into the town and do walks with people and then the money they'd raise, they would raise as he was governor, and they'd keep that money and put it back in to pay for painting the field the, the football stadium or doing something to the park. And it had to be a community project that everyone in the community agreed to do. So he was able to keep that going. Just similar to what we did with with uh, with the um, uh, uh, with the Ingram administration. So it's important, but to understand that that it, it may be cool, but it's got to be relevant. And every state's different. Every situation is different. What works in one state one year may not work in the same state four years later. What a technique that works in one community may not be relevant for another community because every community is different. Every issues are different. But after we did the walk, I got a call from some of my friends who were doing the Bill Ballinger campaign running for the U.S. Senate back in 1980 or whatever he was, and then he's going to walk Michigan. 
And then he walked the Upper Peninsula. Oh, my God, you don't do that. <laughs> well, Arne didn't walk. I mean, he started in the Upper Peninsula where there's 3% of the vote. See, there's this little we'll walk. Well, the other thing is that Michigan media doesn't cover politics like other states do. So you got to remember that, too. So it was, a, it was a doomed strategy from the beginning, but because someone thought it worked well somewhere, let's try it here. It'll work. It didn't. It never would work. It never should have been tried.